Arctic biodiversity is threatened by many factors which are greatly influenced by globalization and climate change, most of which are human-caused. Ice sheet loss and ocean acidification are indirectly caused by humans through climate change, while poaching is directly caused. All three have had great effects on the fauna of the Arctic, and their combined effects threaten the ecosystem as it exists today. Poaching in the Arctic can be divided into two categories, hunting by natives for survival and hunting for commercial goods such as pelts and meats. The largest seal hunt in the world takes place in Canada, though seal hunting also occurs in almost all members of the Arctic Council, as well as Namibia. Although seal hunting has occurred for an estimated 4,000 years in northern Canada, the practice is controversial in the contemporary context of globalization, even though the harp seal, which is the species most hunted, is a species of least concern according to international conservation status. Polar bear hunting has been banned in Russia since 1956. Despite the ban, poaching still threatens their population. In Canada, polar bear hunting is legal and considered unsustainable in some areas. The polar bear is classified as vulnerable according to international conservation status. Due to climate change, ice sheets are melting at ever-increasing rates. They act as one of the greatest protectors against climate change by reflecting the sun's light back into the atmosphere. With the shrinking of the ice sheets, more heat is absorbed by the ocean, causing more melting. As the ice sheets melt, so does the Arctic permafrost, which releases dangerous amounts of methane, one of the most powerful greenhouse gases, into the atmosphere. It has been stated that as early as next year, there could be no ice sheets in the summer. This not only affects uh, global weather patterns, but hugely disrupts the habitat of many Arctic animals. Walruses and seals rely on the ice sheets for their way of life. It acts both as a place to raise their young and rest between feedings. With these areas retreating further out into the ocean and away from safe and food-rich shallow water, these animals are forced onto shore. This has resulted, particularly in the case of walruses, in overcrowding of shore area, which can lead to death or injury of the young from being trampled by the massive and powerful bulls. Seals have been affected by the spread of disease from previously separated populations, which have now come together. Ocean acidification has many side effects separate from direct biodiversity loss, such as greatly disrupting the food web. Acidification is mainly caused by increased atmospheric CO2, which dissolves into the ocean and creates carbonic acid, which in turn creates hydronium ions. The most drastic effect of this is the food web disruption, whose effect on marine mammals are found in two key organisms, algae and plankton. Algae and plankton are the primary producers for the ecosystem, turning sunlight to energy which other organisms uh, can feed on. They also produce oxygen which other mammals need, such as seals. This graph shows a comparison between ice sheet size and scope in the year 2000 with a projection for the year 2100. The difference is enormous. The next graph shows a decline in pH of the oceans between the year 1990 and 2008. A neutral pH is a 7 on a scale from 0 to 14. As you can see, the ocean's pH is steadily lowering as atmospheric CO2 rises. Acidification is also caused by toxins that enter the ocean via northern mining facilities and other manufacturers. These chemicals enter the food chain and progressively build up in animals. For instance, krill may absorb mercury in small amounts, but since whales eat masses of krill, that will eventually f affect the whale. At present levels, we haven't seen deaths, but with an increase of pollution, deaths may be imminent. Secondly, acidic conditions have led to lower, slower metabolism in marine mammals, leading to less energy for reproduction and hunting, which leads to population decline. Acidic waters have also been linked to a reduction in the quality of echolocation. Due to the makeup of the water, acoustic conductivity is inhibited and whales are beginning to have difficulty communicating over regular distances. The Arctic Council is an international group of representatives from nations which have access to the Arctic ecosystem. Canada, Russia, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, and the United States. The group is fairly recent. It was only established in 1996. The group addresses many important international concerns such as indigenous rights, conservation of flora and fauna, sustainable development, and pollution control. There is some recent controversy over whether the Arctic Council should widen its duties to cover military issues, which are growing given the loss of the Arctic ice, uh, which traditionally did not allow passage. 
We argue that the Arctic Council should not start dealing with military issues, since it will inevitably take resources away from their current environmental and indigenous rights projects, which already require increased attention.